biggest difference between that and regular Google ads, as you say, is you're paying per lead versus you're paying per click. I think businesses probably are already covered already. This is just going to weed out the bad players, if you will, that don't, you know, which they're doing this because, you know, they're, they're impersonating other businesses. So... All right. Thanks to everyone who's watching live today, as well as watching this uh, recording in the future. I am excited today to be joined by Corey from Guaranteed PPC. Corey, could you go ahead and introduce yourself to us? Yeah, I'm the senior strategist and owner of Guaranteed PPC. We're a advertising agency that specializes in offering um, so quote unquote guaranteed results for our clients on ad campaigns, uh, Google ads, Facebook ads, pretty you know, any and all online advertising is, is what we handle and do. And uh, we do management with the ads and landing pages and tracking all that in order to get results for our clients. So awesome. And uh, if you don't know who I am and you're watching this, I am John, the CEO of Stub Group. We're also a digital advertising agency focusing on Google ads, meta ads, platforms like that, Premier Google Ads Partner. And today, we're gonna be digging into a very specific type of ad on the Google platform, which is called local services ads. And uh, brought Corey on today to tell us um, about you know, what are local services ads and how they work, and more importantly, strategies and tactics for getting better results from them. And I'm gonna abbreviate them moving forward. I'm gonna call them LSAs, just a little bit less of a mouthful, but again, it stands for local services ad. So Corey, to, to kick things off, could you um, just describe you know, what are local services ads and how are they different from you know, regular search ads on the Google platform? Yeah, local service ads, the biggest difference between that and regular Google ads, uh, as you say, is you're paying per lead versus you're paying per click, if you will. And, um, you know, there's stipulations to be eligible for it. You know, if you go through Google certification program, prove that you're a, a worthy vendor in order to get these. Uh, but once you are approved, then you basically are just setting a certain price per phone call or message lead that you're willing to pay. And, and, and with that, generally speaking, you will get as many leads as Google will agree to send you. And then obviously on uh, Google ads, you're paying per click and it's a lot different to get the leads that you want at a certain cost, you have to understand strategy and things like that. Absolutely. And from a consumer kind of facing perspective, the place you'll you'll typically see this type of ad is if you're on your phone or your computer and you do a search, you know, plumber near me, HVAC near me, things like that. Generally it's local service businesses, professional businesses, um, sometimes you know, local places you could go into physically as well. And you'll see some options come up. Sometimes they'll say Google guarantee or something similar to that, depending upon kind of what industry it is. And you'll see these options where, like Corey said, you can engage and call or fill out a form directly through Google's platform without actually leaving Google's platform and going to uh, to the, the, the advertiser's website per se. So I feel like Corey, from the clients that we have that, that use these and just from what I see in the industry, there's sometimes a little bit of a, of a love-hate relationship with LSAs. Um, it, in your experience, what do you see as some of the, the pros of LSA, some of the things that people really like about them and some of the, the cons, things that people don't like as much about the ad format? Well, um, just like with a lot of Google products, when they're new, they usually have priced the, you know, the opportunity much cheaper than what it ends up being eventually down the road. And the biggest complaint that I hear is, is that they're raising the prices on what they're charging per lead and, um, and, and then other than that, it's how do I get more? Because, you know, these are people that presumably are pre-vetted prospects that Google saying, hey, you're the trusted option in the market. So when they call, they're not needing to be sold. It's just they're ready to book an appointment right away. So therefore, people love these leads. Um, so they just want to get shown more. And then there's no rhyme or reason to it. A lot of times they say they'll get shown a lot and then all of a sudden they're not shown anymore at the top of Google where it says the Google guaranteed and uh, they don't know what to do about it. And so then they, you know, kind of build their 
operation up to handle <laughs> so many jobs coming in and then they can't get the calls calls coming in from the LSAs anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be, that can be really frustrating. The, the inconsistency too. I've, I've seen the same thing where it's like, well, Hey, this week was great. And then next week is terrible. And it's like, well, what do we do differently? There's, there's, you know, only a certain number of levers that can be pulled, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what levers can be pulled, what things you can do to improve your, your ranking of your LSAs. Before we get to that though, I know another concern in the industry that some advertisers in particular face is the idea of fraud where they'll have you know fraudulent or spam leads that are coming through their lsas that they don't want to be paying for and that create problems so can you speak to to what that issue is and if there are any you know solutions or ways to mitigate those issues that you're aware of yeah fraud has become an issue um what will typically happen is like we were just talking about you're starting to get calls from LSA, it's working, and you know, you're getting shown prominently in the Google search results for the terms that you'd want to show up for and you're making a lot of money. And then, so what happened though, in the process of that is you push somebody else out of the way that was making a lot of money. And so <laughs> they get ideas of, how, well, what can I do to try to fix this? And they'll basically just start calling your number and draining your budget, which, you know, that's, Believe it or not, people are un that unethical. And then what you, you basically won't show anymore because your budget's exhausted. And then you're, you know, what they're basically trying to do is lower your answer rate if they can, because then Google won't want to show you anymore. But even if you answer the phone all the time, uh, then you're going to get less closing rates on the leads that you're paying for. And then it still won't be profitable for you. So to, in order to fix this, it's not always fixable, but if you switch your number, then that a lot of times will fix it. Cause what they'll do is they'll actually get your number and then they'll put it into like a dialing system that's hooked up to a, a dialer bot to, to mm. call, or they'll, they'll send it to maybe some team somewhere offshore or whatever, and they'll start calling. So if you just keep switching the number, it can actually throw them off course and basically just make it harder for them to do that to you. And maybe they'll just pick on somebody else. That makes a lot of sense. I've, I've seen the same type of thing happen in, um, in the call tracking space because we offer call tracking to a lot of our clients. And sometimes you'll just start seeing a bunch of calls coming through to a number and you're calling people back and they're like, I never called you. Who are you? And it was just, yeah, you know, somebody got a hold of that number, started plugging into a robo call system or something like that. And then your best case scenario is to just release that, tr that tracking number and get a new one. Um, on the, on the LSA side of things, is it relatively easy to change the phone number that is in the profile or do you have to jump through some hoops with Google before they'll let you make that type of a change? Um, you really don't really have a problem. I personally don't go ahead and change the number myself. So I don't know, to be honest, how much Google makes you go through the re-verification process. I just know yeah. recently there has been click fraud issues and that is the answer specifically. Yeah, that makes sense. I know also, and sometimes it's not even, fr well, there's, so there's fraud that happens and then sometimes there's, you know, wrong numbers or kind of spam leads that come in that aren't quote unquote fraud, but still aren't things you actually want to pay for. So is does Google have a process where you can dispute the leads that they're saying you need to pay for and say, Hey, this actually wasn't truly a lead. Don't, don't charge me for it. Uh, yeah, they did. Uh, however, they're starting to get to phase that out and, um, mm. which is smart because you know, they, they could just nest, you know, charge basically less for the leads, work out what the normal, you know, unqualified lead ratio is and then just charge less and then it solves the problem of anybody having to go ahead and actually do that so gotcha so they're phasing out that ability to um to dispute leads yeah and hopefully they'll reduce the cost per lead yeah. to try to kind of average that out but uh, yeah that is that is really important to know um speaking of of phasing things that you probably also have seen that google just recently announced that um, soon in order to have LSAs, they're requiring you to have verified and active Google business profiles as well, um, which historically, usually there's been a connection between Google business profile and LSA, but now they're actually saying you can't have an LSA. It'll be suspended unless it's linked to a, a Google business profile. Um, what do you think, what would, what would your recommendation be to anybody watching this? Who's, who's running LSAs related to to that change and anything they should they should do proactively to make sure that they're not impacted by it um 
I don't, I'm not sure because basically, I think businesses probably are already covered already. Uh, this is just going to weed out the bad players, if you will, that don't, you know, which they're doing this because, you know, they're, they're impersonating other businesses. So uh, for the most part, you should already have your accounts linked by now and then you should already be good. That makes sense. So yeah, best practice, definitely linking. Um, so let's talk about other other best practices and other tactics to improve your performance, improve your ranking from LSAs. What are what are some of the things that you that you do and that you see your clients doing to um, to help improve that ranking? Yeah. So like we were talking about before, it's quite frustrating to most people that do LSA. They like leads, they want more of them, but they can't figure out how to get more. And you know, sometimes it's a fraud issue, and that is you know something that has to be worked out. Other times, it's just being the levers that you do have to pull. You have to be very diligent in making sure you're pulling those levers to the fullest of your ability because everybody wants those leads. Everybody wants more LSA calls. And um, to do that, you really need to have a 100% answer rate on the phone calls. And, and a lot of people will say, well, yeah, I answer the phone every time, but actually verifying you're getting 100% of your calls uh, answered. And, the, well, you know, we, I realize it's in business things happen and you, you can't do that sometimes. However, uh, you really can nowadays with technology, uh, there's AI programs that you can have that will answer your actual phone calls. And uh, at least for businesses like um, cleaning services where you have to book an appointment, there's AI programs now that can answer that call and book the entire appointment with the user when they call in, have it automatically go to a booking program that you have that your guys already, you know, are that normally goes out and does your appointments will get automatically and takes humans completely out of the equation. So, you know, at least for now, if you go ahead and you deploy that for your business, you have an edge on all your competition because they they don't know anything about the, these new AI programs where you can do this and you have a hundred percent answer rate. And as far as Google's concerned, they want to make as much money as possible. Where do they want to send the calls to the guy who answers hundred percent of the time or 95? I mean, it, at that point, it pre becomes pretty easy. And I know a lot of you guys might be skeptical, like, oh, AI, I, I don't like answering, you know, calls with AI or I don't want to make my customers do that. But honestly, I was very skeptical of myself when I first seen this. And it's actually very, very good nowadays. Uh, it, it sounds just like a human. And for the most part, I mean, compared to, I mean, if you think about it, like how much a, a person that, that you pay that answers the phone will stumble through things, not doing things quite right. It, it's actually as good as what a human could basically do. And at the very least, you should look into it and test it and, and, and see how smooth these systems are now that you can actually use. And they're not expensive to be able to use these systems either. Then on the message leads, because you can, with LSA, you can get phone calls and you can get message leads. On the message lead side, it's the same thing. The, the faster you respond, the more leads you're gonna get. So how do you actually increase your response rate? Well, you can automatically beat everybody else through using AI and software again. There's software where you can actually respond within 30 seconds every single time. And when you're going against other guys who don't have that, you automatically win. So again, Google's gonna wanna send everything they can to you. And one of the things that Google's done recently is when you fill, go, uh, fill out the form for a message lead, it says, do you also wanna send this same message lead to three other people? And the person that they actually recommend is gonna be the person who has the highest answer rate. So you start getting a ton of message leads when you have 100% response rate within 30 seconds, they're just going to want to recommend you every time. And you start getting a lot more leads because of that as well. That's a really good point. So you're saying even if they, you know, someone clicked on someone else's LSA and they go to message them, if they select that option to, yeah, you know, send my message to three other places, get more quotes, you've got that good answer rate, you get there. And so you didn't even have to get that first click because you're, you're kind of earning your spot there by having a good answer rate. That's um, that's a fantastic tip. That's and, really, really interesting. And unlike um, you know, like Angie's List or something like that, where they blast the lead out to a bunch of people, you're legitimately responding to the lead faster than anybody else still. So you still have, 
because if if you ever played that game, in order to make those leads work from those lead providers, you got to be able to answer first. And you know, pricing does obviously come into a it's a major factor in that. But the main thing is being able to answer the lead immediately in order to beat all the other people. Well, you're using software to answer first, so it's actually worth paying for that lead as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Speaking of software, are there any specific names that come to mind, either on the call side of things, that call answering or message answering side of things, where you would recommend a, a specific software provider? Uh, yeah, there's a agency that, uh, is out there that has the software, like a proprietary software that has the, that also has the AI software that can answer the calls and also answer the message leads. So, mm -hmm. and, and just for standalone software, uh, they mm -hmm. have it and they do offer it as a standalone product as well. Um, okay. the actual name of the software that the individual that I know, the agency that has this. I can't remember off the top of my head the name of it. Uh, if you want to just, because my recommendation would just be have a service provider handle it all and not just manage the software sure. yourself, but I'll drop yeah. it down in the uh, show notes. And uh, if you're interested in it, I'll, you can go directly to it. Awesome. Sounds like a plan. Cool. So some very actionable tips there. Um, use, you know, be, be smart about using AI, using tools to get 100% answer rate on the phone side of things, 100% message rate. I agree with you too, as far as um, humans are often not the best at answering calls. You know, we, because we do call tracking for many of our clients, we get to listen to how a lot of their sales reps answer calls. And I think I, I would recommend to any, any business owners who are watching this, um, regularly go and listen to how your team is answering those inbound calls, because that first impression is make it or break it. And often you're all, you'll realize wait, we're, we don't sound good. We don't sound professional. We're not saying our business name um, or we're, you know, advertising the wrong thing. We, we sound rude on the phone, whatever the case may be, that can cost you so much money. And I think there's many situations, like you said, where AI can do at least as good as that, if not better in the way that it answers things. Um, so I think that some great tips to take from this conversation. Are there any other things that you think people should be aware of? It could be mistakes to avoid anything else, you know, along the lines of, of LSAs and how to see good results from that ad type? Yeah, I think I pretty well covered it in, in terms of what you can do. I mean, the just being able to measure and monitor your metrics about how quickly you're answering your leads, ideally just getting software to take it over at this point in time so that you don't have to really worry about having anything subpar would be the best, but mm. really paying attention to that because that's your main factor of you know, how things are going to go. And, and then obviously just understanding how to do, get higher closing rates so you can pay more for the leads and whoever pays the most for the leads ultimately who can pay the most is going to get the most leads still as well. That's also somewhat of a factor, if you will. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's pretty much it. Awesome. Yep. Google, Google likes making money. So if you can figure out ways to make your processes better so you can afford to pay more per lead, like you said, then that's going to be a a winner in Google's perspective as well. Awesome. Well, Corey, thanks so much for coming on to talk about LSAs. Um, where is the best place for people to learn more information about you? Yeah, I have a YouTube channel. It's Guaranteed PPC. You can just search for it on YouTube. It's pretty easy to find where I talk about just ad strategy, how to get more results and profitability from online advertising, landing pages, using tracking, just everything we do at our firm. Awesome. So if you're watching this, go to Corey's channel, Guaranteed PPC on YouTube, subscribe. And while you're at it, if you're not already subscribed, um, subscribe to Stub Group as well so you can get two streams of hopefully very helpful information about how to succeed in the world of Google Ads and digital advertising. Corey, thanks so much for coming. It's great chatting. And uh, everyone watching, thanks so much for your time. We'll see you on the next one.